living in Manila is good. The company I was working for was a Philippine-based company, so uh, and they had big plans uh, moving forward past that project, so we had no real intentions of going anywhere. 35-year-old Adelaide man Damien Berg had a bright future in the Philippines. He had a job in the resources sector and his partner Marvi was expecting their first child. Me and Marvi had planned to have a family. Yeah, we thought it was that time to settle down. But around him, the country he now called home was becoming increasingly chaotic. Across the Philippines, newly elected President Rodrigo Duterte was launching a vicious war on drugs. In an arrest, you must overcome the resistance of the criminal. And if he fights, and he fights to death, you can kill him. And I'll give you a medal. Police and government-backed vigilantes began a wave of state-sanctioned extrajudicial killings. Innocents were soon caught up in the purge as jealous people used Duterte's campaign for their own retribution. Their only real exposure to it was from what we saw on the news. Um, the news is just flooded with, um, with killings every day. But on the night of June 21, Duterte's war on drugs came looking for Damien Berg. That evening, the third floor of the Red Planet Hotel was quiet. Damien Berg was in his room, working on some emails. The work day had been full of um, some fairly important meetings and I had some correspondence that I had to get done that night. Outside his room, a group of armed men gathered at his door. Went over, answered the door in the hotel. Five or six guys just came busting in, Filipino guys with drawn firearms. What's going through your head in that time? I thought it was a robbery. Damien's hands were bound with cable ties as he was led from his room. He had no idea what was going on. It's told to shut up and uh, leave the room, not to say anything. And you do, because they've got the guns, <laughs> so no choice. We went to the elevator, um, and that's where I actually confirmed, I was asked them, hey, you know, who are you guys? And that's when they confirmed they're the police. He must have been petrified. I was, <laughs> you know, I thought we were going down to get shot for sure. Damien was confused as police took him from his hotel to a city back street. TV cameras were soon on the scene. Damien Berg was arrested with another man with police claiming he had tried to sell drugs in the street to an undercover officer. 50 ecstasy pills and cash supposedly belonging to Damien were displayed as TV cameras circled the two men. The weird thing at this stage, I've got no idea what the story is that they're telling. You know, because you've got to remember that they, they came and just forced their way into the hotel and just took me with force for, for no apparent reason. We're taken up to a, a white taxi and then that's uh, on the back of the taxi is um, two piles of drugs and the police told me that's the, that's the drugs that we've recovered from you. As What's going through your mind now? I'm thinking this is a, a complete setup. Damien John Berg protested his innocence as he was arrested in Manila, but police allege he was caught with the ecstasy he'd been selling. News of Damien's arrest spread quickly around the world. In Adelaide, his father Jeff was powerless to help. Damien is in custody uh, and is being treated OK. It will take time for his case to be heard, and as family, uh, we will be supporting as as, uh, as much as we can. It's a dormitory style living, um, probably from here to, or maybe from the kitchen bench to the to the wall here, big, and there's about 70 people. Um, How many? 70, 70 in there. As Damien Berg languished in an overcrowded cell, he began to suspect that he'd been set up by one of his partner Marvi's exes. President Duterte's murderous war on drugs continued ramping up. There will be no let up in this campaign. Double your efforts, triple them if need be. We will not stop until the last drug lord, the last financer, and the last pusher have surrendered or put behind bars. or below the ground, if they so wish. 
Against this backdrop, Damien Berg's trial began in August. If found guilty of selling the ecstasy, he faced a life sentence. Sort of throughout my trial was watching his um, war on drugs um, being outlaid and obviously I was quite concerned about it because um, all these people are, are being murdered and, and um, there's this crackdown on drugs. It was the worst time to be um, accused of such charges. You've done the thing, according to the police, that they're currently out there killing people for. What was going through your mind? Well, you know, obviously I thought that regardless of my innocence or that, I didn't think that I'd be freed. His partner, Marvi, tried to stay positive. I was scared of words. And the fact that I know that he's not guilty and he's not doing anything bad. And I said, I will just be here for him and do anything that I can help. The only thing that could possibly help was the CCTV vision that showed Damien being bundled out of his hotel and not arrested in the street, as the police claimed. Waiting in prison, Damien became convinced the police had destroyed the evidence. That's what I was afraid of, that, you know, I'm never going to see my son born. Um, I'll never come to Australia again, I'll never come home. Um, yeah, it's, it's hell, it's, it's, it's the worst feeling. You know, I'd rather be shot in one of these bright bus than, than sit, sit there for the rest of my life. There's the security guy, he was on our side, he testified for me. Three days into the trial, the yeah, vision was so finally tendered. The yeah, judge found the CCTV yeah. completely destroyed yeah, the integrity of the police evidence and Damien Berg was finally acquitted Damien on September 15. There's the police, my friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lucky. As Duterte's war continues unchecked, Damien Berg fears many of Duterte's criminals may have also been victims of a setup. And I'll give you a medal. This sort of thing seems to be happening all the time now. It's not a matter of finding a crime, it's what they can prove. And they've shown that they can prove a lot, you know, just by lying.